Ever heard of this thing called Rails? Ruby on Rails specifically. It's a framework that changed how the web works. It would be dishonest to not point at Rails and credit it for a lot of how we build applications today. It really helped normalize the idea of a fast moving MVC model where you're defining things on a backend largely around your database and then creating powerful UIs for it through templating systems. Sadly, its creator seems pretty done with change and he refuses to acknowledge a lot of the things that have pushed the web forward since his time. And it's really starting to show. The two things I wanna focus on today are DHH's choice to move off of the cloud, as well as DHH's weirdly focused disdain on TypeScript. The TypeScript thing is obviously what inspired the video, but I think both of these really show the problem that I wanna highlight here. First, I wanna start with the cloud thing because the cloud exit is an article that keeps getting shared. And I think there are important points that are being misunderstood. For those who aren't aware, DHH runs the company 37 Signals, which makes products including Basecamp and Hey, the email service. For a while, they've been building on the cloud with things like AWS. Somewhat recently, they decided to move off of the cloud and off of AWS and start hosting their own servers instead. And this has significantly decreased the cost of running their service. That's cool to hear and see. It is honestly interesting to see companies moving off of the cloud and showing real meaningful cost savings. But there are some important things that have to be true about your company for this to be the case. The first thing is that the difference in cost between AWS and your own servers has to be great enough to cover the engineering cost of setting up those servers yourself. Let's say you have two people dedicated to running those servers, keeping everything going, setting up all the deployment systems, building all the pipelines and everything. And with AWS, you only need one person. That's a difference of 250 plus thousand dollars a year, depending on how well paid the engineer is and all the additional costs around having an employee. And you could dedicate them to other things. On top of that, the amount of agility you have has gone down significantly. If you have to provision specific hardware in order to try out new things, the whole process and feedback loop has been significantly slowed down. I'm not saying it isn't worth it, I'm saying it's only worth it if you have very specific circumstances. One of which is, as I said, the cost difference is greater than the engineering cost. The other, and this is where I think things are interesting, is your growth isn't great enough to have to worry about provisioning. If it's possible that your application has twice as many users tomorrow as it does today, running your own infrastructure becomes really, really risky and potentially will lead to massive outages in your service. If there's any potential at all for your service to grow past its current peak usage, you can either over provision where you're spending more money or you can have downtime where you're losing more money. And I don't think either of those are good options. The beauty of cloud systems like AWS is that they have all of these over provision servers and you're renting space when you need it, you're not renting it when you don't. It's really hard for self-hosted servers to scale anywhere near as well as something in a greater cloud owned by a company that already owns more than enough servers, more than you would ever, ever need. Most of us are working hard to make it possible to grow further. I know Upload Things traffic has doubled week over week now for a couple months. And if we were to make dedicated servers to save our costs, we would have to add more servers every few days. And if we have a down slump, we'd have to go manually take that, those servers down or we're paying for costs that we don't need to. This effort is why the cloud exit doesn't make sense for the majority of businesses, because most businesses have variable traffic that can change. And to be frank, we're all trying to increase. The only reason a cloud exit could make sense is if you have plateaued or peaked your amount of traffic and it's either flatlined or starting to decline, at which point squeezing out every penny from your existing users might make sense. And when I see a company proudly announcing that they've exited the cloud, what I see is a company announcing that they're no longer interested in new user acquisition. Speaking of user acquisition and user hostility, let's talk about this new TypeScript drama. <laughs> because man, DHH, certainly loves to shit on types. I know that as a Ruby dev, he doesn't have much experience or desire to work with types. Honestly, I get it. I was a big Ruby dev and an even bigger Elixir dev, which took a lot of inspiration from Ruby. And honestly, I didn't feel the need for types too much when I had powerful quality utilities around things like pattern matching to make sure I had the data I needed when I started working with it. But man, once you go in a typed system, it's incredibly hard to go back. I'm a TypeScript convert. I was very skeptical going in. I had many projects where people filed pull requests adding TypeScript and I rejected and closed them because I didn't see it as necessary until I started working with it, especially once I started working on it with a team and started consuming people's code that was written with TypeScript. And all of a sudden, autocomplete could carry me through the API. I'd get really useful errors when I was calling things in ways I shouldn't. And my overall experience with JavaScript got so much better that I'm now considered a web dev and JavaScript engineer. TypeScript is a huge credit to that change for me. I'd almost certainly still be a mostly backend engineer if it wasn't for TypeScript and how much more 
enjoyable it made web dev for me. Yes, there are compiler steps and yes, your code has more letters in it than it used to. But I've often found that TypeScript code is easier and simpler to work with because it's going to tell you when it's wrong and it encourages patterns that make for simpler code. No more having one variable that's used for 15 different things depending on how far you are in the code. Types are easy to work with if the code is simplified. And I found so many opportunities to fix types just by simplifying the code the types are defining. And if you take advantage of TypeScript's powerful inference primitives, you can make incredible things with these systems. And it's so sad to see that DHH is so anti-TypeScript that he's not only pushing for vanilla JS at the company, he's actually deprecating the type definitions included in libraries that they help maintain for the open source community. This is just insanely, insanely user hostile. And thankfully, I'm not the only one who thinks this. So here's the article from DHH. By all accounts, TypeScript's been a big success for Microsoft. I've seen loads of people sparkle with joy from dousing JavaScript with explicit types that can be checked by a compiler. So I've never been a fan. Yada yada. Here's the PR where it's dropped. Let's find his comment. Fully recognize that TypeScript offers people some advantages, but to my eyes, the benefits are evident in this PR. The code not only reads better, it's also free of the type wrangling and gymnastics needed to please the TypeScript compiler. We write all our client-side code at 37 signals now on pure JS, and the same too with any internal libraries. This is going to bring that in line. You're the only one who thinks this way, DHH. As an industry, we've moved on. <laughs> yeah, Prettier was removed too, crazy. Yeah, this looks so much cleaner. I love how they have to use hashes now to determine private versus public because TypeScript can't do it for them anymore. It makes it obvious that this is not any HTML element, but body. Maybe you could rename current element to current body element or add a comment explaining that it's not HTML or that it's not any HTML element. Look, we're losing useful information. And this is the problem. I, I feel like people are mad that there is more here, but it means you make less mistakes and this thing is easier to consume. Oh, what did Spike say? I fucking love Spike. I'm sure he has some interesting, <laughs> there was a way to statically catch this error. <laughs> undefined or undefined. <laughs> It's a great spike comment. I already have a video where I talk about how TypeScript is an additional burden on library maintainers. Making code that works well for people consuming it in TypeScript is hard and we do have to put in effort. We should think about it less like this huge burden library maintainers have to take on and more like a way to define your API schema that is universal and can be consumed by any other TypeScript dev and even JS devs that are using tools with TypeScript support like VS Code. The reality is that these TypeScript definitions benefit everybody. And before we had TypeScript, we were making up crazy ways to do the same things with massive piles of testing or giant comments with JS doc trying to enforce specific behaviors and clarify what things are supposed to be doing. It kind of makes sense to me that someone who hates TypeScript this much is also a huge proponent of test-driven development because TDD only works if you exactly know what you're building and JavaScript only works if you know exactly what you're building. TypeScript solves a different problem, which is code that changes over time. Things that need to be maintained for years or consumed by people who might not even be in contact with you. TypeScript allows for a much, much wider variety of, I'll be frank, everything from contributions to library definitions to maintenance internally and externally without a good type system. Making code changes with confidence becomes much harder. But if you have DHH's confidence, I can see how getting confidence from somewhere else seems like a waste of time. This is why I'm so frustrated. I, I'm tired of people saying, well, he made Rails, so everything he says must be true. And this is why we've seen so many other people coming out and talking crap, like that spike comment I just showed, or this awesome dunk from Rich Harris that I found on Twitter. Removing types from your own code is clownish, epically misguided behavior but whatever, to each their own. Removing types from a library that other people have to use, however, is just user hostile dick watery. And this is coming from the guy who moved off of TypeScript to JS doc. He is one of the most reasonable TypeScript users slash anti-users. And he's still out here explaining why DHH is being stupid. So I remember you decided to use JS doc over TypeScript. Do you think it's a good way to add strong types to vanilla? Yes. Oh, there's a new rich tweet, oh boy. It takes a lot of effort to get Rich Harris this mad. Rich does not get angry often. He gets a little funny at times, but never 
angry like this. And it's fully correctly placed here. There's a lot of times where I haven't agreed with Rich. Okay, not that many. I'll be realistic. I agree with him on a lot of things. But like for Rich, Rich, Primogen, and me to all be perfectly aligned on something, that means the other side's likely fucking up. I agree with all of this. I don't have too much else to say here. I owe Rails a lot of my own success. Both Rails and Ruby, as well as Elixir and Phoenix, were essential to me getting started and finding success in web dev. And it's sad to think that the person who helped me level up here is not continuing to level up themselves. And rather than listening to the community and learning about how code works outside of his little bubble, DHH is choosing to say we're all wrong and go as far as to say that there is no argument to be had because he's not interested in listening. So. Yeah. If you have anybody at your job who's currently pushing back on TypeScript because of this article, link them this video. See if it helps at all, because let's be realistic. This is a bit of a mess. <laughs> I will admit there's ways you can use TypeScript wrong, and I'll pin a video about that all in the corner. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all. Peace, nerds.